Billie Eilish is one of those artists that I was aware of, but I didn't really pay attention to. Like I only knew like maybe four of her songs and I don't even think I even listened to any of the songs all the way through. And up until this point, I really hadn't heard her singing voice before. I mean, maybe I have, but just didn't realize it. But either way, for the next seven days, I'm gonna listen to nothing but Billie Eilish because by then hopefully I'll have a better understanding of her success, popularity, and everything else that makes Billie Eilish, Billie Eilish. My rule is that I have to listen to each album once before going back to listen to anything else. And a bonus rule is to try and use a song in a social media post. At the end, I'll choose my top three songs from each album and my top three songs overall, and then I'll rank each of her albums. And because she only has three studio albums, I'm gonna make sure I listen to any EPs or singles that were outside of her albums. And some of her songs have like a lot of different remixes and whatnot, so if I missed a couple songs, then I'm sorry, I guess. <laughs> but here's my breakdown of what I plan on doing. Obviously, I can listen to the song and comprehend the lyrics while I'm listening, but a lot of times artists have an upbeat or a catchy song and a lot of people just listen to the song and don't even realize what the lyrics are. I'm, I'm people. Not all the time, but sometimes. Just in case you don't know who Billie Eilish is, here's a quick recap. Billie Eilish pirate Baird O'Connell gained a lot of attention with her single Ocean Eyes in 2015, and this is where her older brother Phineas O'Connell comes into play. He's a singer, songwriter, and producer, and technically an actor, and Ocean Eyes was originally written for his band, but it ended up being a better fit for Billie Eilish's vocals. They slapped it on SoundCloud, and the rest is history. Since then, she's released three studio albums, an EP, and many other singles along with her brother Phineas. She has won numerous awards and is an advocate for many issues like climate change, women's rights, gender equality, and animal rights, and currently she sits at number three in the world on Spotify. So as I start my day and like listen to her first album, her first studio album, I don't know exactly what to expect. Like I don't know what kind of mood I'm gonna be in after I'm listening to these songs and everything. Uh, but I'm, kind of, I'm looking forward to it. I really am because like I don't I personally don't have any judgments toward her I didn't have any kind of like pre assumptions or whatever I just knew that she was just Billie Eilish. I mean, I, I don't know how else to explain it It's also interesting because just from looking at the track list I only knew the chorus for bad guy and you should see me in a crown So when the beat changed a little bit at the end of bad guy, I ain't gonna lie I wasn't expecting that so me and Abigail started watching uh, Abbott elementary. You want to show those? If not, I'm sorry mm -hmm. um, and then the thing is that's taking up my editing time, but obviously I enjoy doing things with her. So it's like that takes priority in my life, you know? So <laughs> you know who uh, Billie Eilish is, right? I do. Have you listened to any of her songs? I, I couldn't tell you the names of the songs, but I, I've listened to their songs. So like Bad Guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got some work to do. I have a doctor's appointment to go to for my foot, which if you need to be caught up, uh, long story short, broke my foot about two months ago and I'm having these uh, follow-up checkup appointments. But as I got here, I finished the last song on When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Goodbye. And overall, I'd say that like, it was just like a melancholy kind of smooth, vibe throughout the whole thing. I did realize that the song, My Strange Addiction, it sounded familiar. So I don't know if I've like heard that song and didn't realize it was her or what. But other than Bad Guy and You Should See Me in a Crown, that song was the only one that sounded remotely familiar to me. But later on, I'm gonna look at the lyrics and then go through the album one more time. And maybe I'll have different thoughts of the songs after I read all the lyrics and realize what each song is about. In other words, it was at this time that I decided to change up the rule a little bit. Because she only had three studio albums, I was gonna dedicate a day to each album instead of just speed listening through all of them. So my plan was to listen to each album and then read the lyrics and maybe listen to the songs again while I'm reading the lyrics and then base my top three off of that. So if you haven't figured out, today was dedicated to when we all fall asleep, where do we go? The good news is my bone is healing where it cracked. The bad news, I mean, I guess it's not bad. I still can't run or jump or anything, but we're gonna get there. <laughs> we're gonna get there, step by step. Literally. And since I tried to be a safe driver, I decided to listen to the album again on my way home. And then when I got home, that's when I absorbed the lyrics as I was listening to the rest of the album. And after my lyrical adventure, I would choose Barry a Friend, You Should See Me in a Crown, and Bad Guy with Elo Milo as an honorable mention. I personally don't relate to a lot of the songs, which is totally fine. But the reason I chose Barry a Friend as my number one is because I personally have an experience with sleep paralysis and it is not a fun thing at all. But I think overall, the album was just solid and very bass heavy. <laughs> another day, another dollar. That's what they say, right? I was looking at the track list of Happier Than Ever before I got in the car, and I can genuinely say, and honestly say, that I don't know a single track on this album, just based off the name. It's, something might play, and I might know it, and it might sound familiar, but as of right now, I couldn't tell you a single song or tune from this album. 
I didn't even think that I finished the album before getting to work because it's almost an hour long and my ride to work is like 20 minutes. And this was also a day at work where I wasn't necessarily doing anything by myself so I couldn't really listen to the music. We were actually testing the possibilities of a virtual production background by using an overpriced projector. Oh, and if you're curious, this is our studio resident, Annie. She gets lonely sometimes. So if you could just say hi, Annie, in the comments, I'll make sure that she gets the message. I eventually made it home and I actually didn't listen to anything on the way home. It was just one of those rides where I just want to listen to nature, I guess, of the city. I, yeah. But when I did get home, I had some things that I need to post online to sell. So I did that while listening. And then it was time to absorb the lyrics. But before that happened, I will say that when the song Therefore I Am started playing, I was like, oh, I know this song. I, I just didn't realize the name of it for some reason, I guess. And this is one of those moments where I feel like it would be beneficial to have like a live reaction, but I'm not doing that. So this is what you get. <laughs> After my lyrical digestion of this album, I have Lost Cause, Overheated, Therefore I Am, and Happier Than Ever as an honorable mention. Even though Lost Cause is describing someone that's a lost cause, I, I thought the groove was perfect. And then Overheated, I really like that song because she addresses the media's expe expectations of like celebrities and how they should be this way or that way. And like, what's the next version of Enter Celebrity Name? Even Phineas said this in an interview. He said, well, the only version of that question that I can get behind is who is the next person that will do exactly what they want and be deemed pop music. That verbiage I would understand, but to me, it does a huge disservice to Billy and that you could be a next Billy. I personally just think that's a great way to say it. And on that same topic, I've even heard people say that Billy Eilish was the new Lord. Just try to be you and whatever you do. And I think that's something that all of us, including myself, can be reminded of. And that's honestly why I chose Therefore I Am as number three. And I'll also add that the song Oxytocin was just for some reason a great song to drive to. And then going from getting older to I didn't change my number was a big change <laughs> as far as tempo and music and all that. Today was a great day because it was another step towards my recovery. Your boy here graduated from physical therapy. I didn't really get a certificate or anything, but um, I did my last one and that's a good thing because I'm healing, woo! But I'm sitting here waiting on Abigail to pick me up because she dropped me off and it was my fault for not texting her in advance so that she could be here when I was finished. So now I wait. It's funny because I have my AirPods in and when you take a video on the iPhone, you can't hear it. the music that's playing, so it doesn't matter. Now, although I primarily work for the rest of the day, I did manage to listen to Hit Me Hard and Soft and it did help that this album came out this year. Like I knew about the song Lunch, I just never really listened to it fully through and I knew about the song Birds of a Feather but honestly, I didn't really think that it was Billie Eilish because I never really heard her singing voice because at first, when I first heard the song earlier this year, I only knew of her like bad guy or therefore I am voice. After listening throughout the day, I had my lyrical quest and I realized that this album wasn't as bass heavy as the previous two, but I ended up choosing The Greatest, Birds of a Feather, and Wildflower as my favorites with Blue as an honorable mention. The Greatest was just a nice, soft, to a big build belter type of song. And I think I have a soft spot for those types of songs, to be honest. And Wildflower, after I read the lyrics and understand everything about the song, I was like, dang, that's cold. And also the last line of the last song, Blue, is but when can we hear the next one? And people at the time of the release thought that this was like hinting at a double release. But then other people also thought that it was just talking about the pressures of celebrities and you just, you know, you release an album and they're already expecting another one. One thing I will say real quick is I think I'm just interested to see how, uh, like for the rest of the week, since I've already listened to all the albums, how like my favorite songs or top songs change over time, especially as I continue to like deep dive into who she is or her career or, and all that. Maybe I'll watch some live shows, um, I don't know yet, but I think I'm just interested to see how that develops just within this week. Get a large Harlem pumpkin with uh, ice, sorry. We try to support the local coffee shop as much as we can. And I mean, if it's just good, it's just good. This angle makes me look like I'm really short in comparison to where I need to sit to drive. But I promise you, I'm good. Now I know I said what I said, but I also didn't realize that today I was just listening to the EP, Don't Smile At Me but I had a plan. I wasn't like terribly busy today, so I figured that I could just sit and read the lyrics while I was listening to the song, because the EP all together was like 30 minutes long. So I was like, I could knock out two birds with one stone. So that's exactly what I did. And so far I had the most trouble picking the top songs. And it might be because it was like not as many songs compared to the albums, but still. I ended up choosing I Don't Wanna Be You Anymore, Copycat, and Ocean Eyes with Watch and Bellyache as honorable mentions. I think it was cool that I Don't Wanna Be You Anymore just talked about her insecurities and everything, and it just helps her relate to her audience and kind of just reminds 
people that she is deep down a normal person that just happens to sing and has celebrity status, but she's still a normal person. She even said this about this song. I go through a lot of depression I have for most of my life and I know so many people have the same issues as I do. And most people don't even have a way of expressing that. They keep it inside them and are hurt by themselves. And I want to have music that people can listen to. If I write a song that you feel like you relate to and when you hear it, you go, that's my song, it's yours. Copycat was all about fake people. Oceans was the OG. And I will say that the song Watch kind of reminded me of like a Taylor Swift song or just a general pop song kind of groove. And I will say that my favorite line from the song Bellyache was, thought I'd feel better, but now I got a bellyache. Because when you have the full context of the song, it just makes sense. Man, it is hot out here. Today we're actually going to a little parade hosted by our local fire department. I'm not sure how much uh, Billie Eilish I'll be able to listen to today, but because I'll be at a community event, there's most likely gonna be other music playing. So forgive me for listening to other music unintentionally. I was also wondering how I would be listening to the same couple of songs over and over again, but at the same time, I was like, some people probably do that unintentionally anyway. I finally have an idea for like a social media post feature in one of her songs, but I gotta wait until I see Michael when I go back into work, which will happen after my seventh day of this experience. So if you wanna see what song I chose for a video, you can head over to my social media accounts. And if you wanna see the behind the scenes, then you can see that on my Patreon, even if you're a free member. But after getting through these songs, I have Lovely, Bored, and Six Feet Under. Lovely to me is the most relatable song, but then again, so is Bored and Six Feet Under, unfortunately for some people. I don't know why, but I just, I really just enjoy Lovely overall as the melody, the tune, the lyrics, everything. And I, I can't really explain it right now. <laughs> Maybe it was because it was just more than Billie Eilish on that track, I, I don't know. <laughs> So like overall, I'm just in this like nice chill state the entire time I'm just listening. Um, I know for, oh God, <laughs> there's a car coming. The second set of the songs didn't seem as exciting, but I did find more meaning in them as I read the lyrics. For these last few songs, I did end up choosing the 30th, What Was I Made For, and TV. For the 30th, I really do feel like we feel the effects of other people's trauma, meaning that like, if it didn't directly happen to us and we were just bystanders, it can cause you to be afraid of a certain thing or a situation just because you saw it happen to somebody else. And I feel like the song explains a car accident in that way. And even though there's different levels of car accidents, I feel like a lot of people just experience something like that every day, unfortunately. It's time to go ask the kids what they think about Billie Eilish. Question, what do you think of Billie Eilish? Ew. What you got against her? She's weird. I like Lovely with Cleed in it. Okay. Man, what you think of Billie oh, Eilish? Yeah. You said what? What do you think of Billie Eilish? You give me the oh shit. Uh, what you know about that? <laughs> you think of Billie Eilish? Of Billie Eilish? I mean, I don't really have an opinion. <laughs> She's just there? Yeah. Uh, I understand. Uh -huh. The last day I was just out here chilling, listening to all of her music in different situations, most notably as I was reading, which wasn't necessarily the easiest thing to do, to be honest. So I took some time to watch some of her live performances, which I chose Bad Guy, Therefore I Am, The Greatest, just to name a few. Watching a live video also put things in perspective, even though I know seeing an artist live is usually nine times out of 10 better than just watching a live video performance. While I was watching these, I had to ask myself, like, would I ever go see her in concert? And the answer is I really don't know. <laughs> I will say that as of this recording, she is currently on tour and the closest stop of her tour to me is in Atlanta. So I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I, I, I probably won't. I think the duo of Billy and Phineas has been good for them, obviously. Um, and even though she only has three albums, she's still young and could probably do this for 10 plus more years if she wanted to do that for that long. But for now, out of her discography, my top songs are The Greatest, Bellyache, and I Don't Wanna Be You Anymore with Birds of a Feather, Lost Cause, and Bury a Friend as honorable mentions. Honestly, I could probably add more to the list or take some or change them up as time goes on, and that's totally fine. And I might not relate to some songs the same way you do, which is also totally fine. But like, hopefully most artists, uh, songs like I Don't Wanna Be You Anymore, I like how she's just open, even though she was younger and she's just expressing her feelings. I like that she was just being vulnerable because it's not easy to be vulnerable in, in whatever you do. But when you are vulnerable, sometimes it just makes people realize that you're just a normal person just like them. And as far as her albums go, I would put Hit Me Hard and Soft as number one, followed by When We Fall Asleep, 
then happier than ever and if don't smile at me was a studio album i would probably put that at two or three to be honest and i did do a little bit more digging a little bit more investing into who billy eilish was and so i watched a couple other videos like this one from vanity fair where she breaks down her career so far and it explains a lot of things like why the album when we fall asleep sounds sad or how she directed some of her music videos or even a confirmation as to why happier than ever was my least favorite album Bad guy completely changed my life. That's really the, what this whole interview should be about, is bad guy and its effect on my life. Basically what I'm trying to say is you should just give that video a watch. I'll link it in the description. Personally, I think I would have to be in the mood to listen to Billie Eilish and because of that, I don't know how many of her songs would be in my like general rotation, but I can't discredit her and Phineas and all their hard work and how the fact that they just continue to create things first together and then creating something so unique and so different compared to other artists in this time period and honestly, it just makes me ask myself, how can I do that in my own life? Yeah. Sunday morning fuels quickly turns to afternoons. It's like that I can barely go and catch it, kinda how I feel with you.